So right now, during climate change, I would not, in my opinion, I wouldn't chase after beauty and obviously sexuality, big families. I wouldn't chase after being normal. If you have the ability to comprehend what is going on, this is now the time to really redirect, like literally redirect, not wait for another sickness. Because in this environment, if you wait for another sickness to figure out how you're going to deal with that sickness, you might not survive it. Okay, the wild swings and the barometric pressure are so aggressive, more for some people that people don't have time to turn shit around, literally. They don't have time. And it takes a conditioning to have time to assimilate and adapt to a type of climate change. Now, I woke up this morning. I woke up, I was tired, yes. I slept in. I'm feeling like, ugh. But I don't feel bad, I just feel tired. And what is it, 43 degrees and it's like 906. It was 39 degrees last night. It was just 76 a couple days ago. And then now it's down to freezing temperatures. Okay, that does something to people's systems. Whether it's aggressive heat or aggressive cold, and then the swings from hot to cold is what is messing people up. That's climate change. That's aggressive destructive climate change and so I figured out that death right now is beautiful death is partying death is drugs death is fighting your conditions with the medical holistic system do you know who profits from people suffering It's the medical holistic energy healing world and anyone that sells you a concoction or even recommends you something to take away your pain and suffering because that's social capital. That's selling that you love and care about someone because you want to take away their pain and suffering. That's still a profit to somebody else. When they're looked at as the hero, that they've taken away your pain and suffering They've given you things to cover up your pain and suffering. That's someone profiting off your suffering is when they claim they can take away your pain and suffering. Well, sorry, that doesn't fly anymore. That's the death culture out there. That's literally the death culture are not only people in denial, but those who claim and aim to take away your pain and suffering. And I have to blow my nose. And when people aim to take away your pain and suffering, they want to be the hero. They want to be the god and the goddess in your world. They want to be your guru. They want to be the the most influential thing in your world. So even though there is actually no money exchanging hands when you're recommending someone a pill, a powder, a supplement, even you know, a lifestyle of distraction to take away your pain and suffering. It's still you acting as an influential person that has no business taking away anything from you. That's like someone stealing your, your, your spirit. That's someone stealing your life force. When someone aims to take away your pain and suffering. And that's an intention. It can be dressed up as love. It can be dressed up as mocking. It can be dressed up as hate. It can be dressed up as anything you want relative to what the person perceives what they're doing and and how you perceive what they're doing. And I've seen it all. I've seen mocking people that say, oh, Jillian, you're this and here. And they come like they're, they're from love and then they recommend me a parasite cleanse. And I look at their page and they're all about the rapture and aggressively religious and I'm like yeah I know why you're recommending me a parasite cleanse 
because you have a lot of parasitic entities within you that need to be released and you're projecting. You see, right now, beauty is not something to chase after because beauty means that you're looking at the industry standard of beauty and then you do everything you can to carve into yourself, to inject yourself, to starve yourself, to stay so cured and unchanging and de-evolutionary. So you look like a pretty corpse when that time comes for you to pass away because inevitably people will because they will fight evolution to such an extent they won't be able to survive it. And so to be, to stay alive in this society, you cannot, you cannot follow the industry standards of beauty and being cured. And so boom, the medical holistic energy healing profit from suffering in plain sight, from suffering. And it's in plain sight. It literally is. And so during this climate change, life is ugly and death is beautiful. Now, here's the thing. What did I say? If you want, so what did somebody say? If you want to understand how to fix a problem in the world, you have to ask who is profiting from the problem. It's your friends and family who try to take away your pain and suffering. It's your mom, it's your dad, it's your sister, it's your brother, it's people on Facebook. Those who have a license, those who doesn't, who don't, those who are in your inbox recommending you cures, those from the third world countries recommending you a doctor with all the herbs and extracts, those who are giving you a solution to your problems, those who are profiting from the suffering. And so, so if you want to understand how to fix a problem in the world, you have to ask who is profiting from the problem, not who is suffering from it. And so anyone and I said medical, holistic, energy, healing, profit from the suffering. And that's everyone around you. Even the religious people. Even those that take away food and say that you shouldn't drink coffee, you should only drink mushroom juice. Those who are in the health and wellness world profit from your suffering. And they're all around you. Even mothers taking away their pain from their children. Because the mothers and the fathers don't know how to deal with pain and suffering. So what do they do? They take it away until that kid has nothing left. And so I will say, during climate change, life is ugly and death is beautiful. To be cured in a dynamic environment, being cured follows the laws of entropy or thermodynamics. Which means death is imminent relative to the state of biological existence. So how many girls and guys out there who are under oncology, under some type of localized or socialized anesthesia, who are over the rainbow, all about love and kindness, and who are activists against something, who are starving themselves. They're in entropy. Oh, but they look hot. They look hot and sexual. Hey, if you want to be a pretty corpse, great. Before 9-11, 2001, the climate was relatively stable, okay? But there was a smattering of cancers and other diseases dotting the population. People were alarmed, but not as they are alarmed today during aggressive climate change, because we have so many died suddenly. But people, were accept, people accepted the rate of died suddenly 24 years ago. They were okay with grandma dying suddenly, they were okay with daddy dying suddenly if he was fighting something. And sometimes they say, oh, it was God's will. Someone who was like 50 years old and they were a runner or 40 years old or 30 years old and they were a runner and athlete and they just died on the track. And it wasn't that, it wasn't that mostly like popular, but it didn't happen that often. And so that, what do they say? They said, oh, it was God's will. It was his time. And that's all people, that's how they chalked it up to die suddenly to those who were like in their 30s and 40s. But they expected like 70 or 80 year olds to die suddenly. And so people were alarmed, but not as they are alarmed today during aggressive climate change. Currently, we have had major drops in temperatures the last two days and people are dropping like flies. Literally, literally, even more so the last 50 years. The last 50 years, the system developed standards of beauty, ability, and lifestyle of which people became so used to and expected and even fought and died for through the beauty, health, and wellness industry. Some people were given the gift of blood type. 
Okay, blood type A and B in a dynamic in a less dynamic environment, your your hamster wheel is running faster than most people like a blood blood type O. So when you're blood type O and you're a little bit more sluggish and not say sluggish, but not say slower, but a bit more even. Okay, unless you took speed em up drugs and stuff like that. But those were blood type A and B were faster, smarter in the brain. So they're making connections faster than some of the other blood types. So they had the gift of genetics during that time. But now when people are blood type A and B in this environment, they're running their hamster wheel so fast, they actually have to slow down and eat a bunch of food and release demons in order to survive. So some people were given the gift of blood type, DNA, pedigree, even privilege. That now makes no difference because the climate is changing aggressively with wild swings in the barometric pressure and particle manipulation acceleration. Even if you achieved a standard of beauty, developed a coveted lifestyle, and even tapped into certain abilities, you would have to fight to be cured in that specific state of existence. If you felt any sort of change in that situation, you were told to carve out the problem, medicate the problem, or starve the problem. You were never told to adapt to it, feed it, and release it properly, whatever that means to you. So now to be beautiful with ability coupled with a lifestyle, you are following the laws of death, entropy, or thermodynamics. People will do drugs, get operations, resist change, starve themselves, use remedies, surgeries, and even inject themselves with whatever is latest thing on the market. Okay, like the latest therapies, VACCINESs, or Botox, or any other type of um, vitamin therapy that they do, like B12 shots and whatever else. So beautiful is deadly, or GCMAF, that I see now. It's like, people are like, oh, what do you think of GCMA GCMAF? And I'm like, that was like way back in 2012. Now you're discovering GCM GCMAF? What is that? It's a type of remedy for autism that you inject in someone. And back then, back in 2012, I was questioning, like, why, if you're against the VHCCINES, why would you inject yourself with GCMAF to combat autism? That's when I knew the holistic world was a bunch of load of fucking bullshit, of which I'm seeing now in the um, chemtrails world. Those in the holistic world are now trying to promote all these holistic remedies for whatever they think is going to be the solution to their problem. Okay? So now, to be beautiful with ability coupled with lifestyle, you are following the death the laws of death, entropy, or thermodynamics. People will do drugs, get operations, resist change, starve themselves, use remedies, surgeries, and even inject themselves with whatever is the latest thing on the market. So beautiful is deadly until the mother nature fights you on your cures and starts making you bloated, disheveled, aged, losing life force while developing the defense mechanisms like pain and suffering, letting you know your habits will not work anymore staying cured. Okay, so that's why you have the filters on there. That's why people play with the filters. Because their body is being ravaged by time and by their lifestyle and belief system. They have to look socially acceptable. And especially if they're selling you a supplement, a detox, a lifestyle, a belief system, you can't look like the Wicked Witch of the East or the West or the North or the South. So you have to look like whatever the filters are, are allowing you to look relatively socially acceptable. And so mother nature will fight to death. And so when you, so when you are incurred and fluctuating with the environment, you will not look like the industry standard of beauty anymore. You'll have to rest. You'll have to sleep, be bloated, eat, have mucus and change and even be tired. I don't know if you're here to me, but I woke up this morning with so much mucus. I was cut and I slept in and I released a bunch of poop this morning too. Life is ugly. When it is allowed to live in a dynamic environment and beauty is deadly as it fights the environment until it's exhausted and dies. So now look at the chicks out there on their diets, doing their Botox, uh, who have to stay stuck in drug addicts and alcoholism and smoking the pot all the time and doing all the supplements, selling you a lifestyle of remedies and surgeries and everything else under the sun. They have something to sell you. Because they feel great, right? They feel great until they don't. In the future, when the weather changes and calms down, those who survive climate change will be finally organically beautiful. And those who are so weak and decaying will finally be ugly or pass away, looking like a plastic corpse. 
And so those who have autoimmune disorders, you need the food. You need all the food. You need to pull out the crap out of your ass, literally. You need to rest. You can't afford to be so discriminatory about the food supply. You have to take in the foods that cause you a little allergic reaction a little bit at a time and cough and sneeze and blow your nose and feel what you have to feel in order to survive. You're hanging by a string for a reason because your body is starving. Some of you are so morbidly abundant that you have to release that huge ass poop demon in your body that it takes time to release. It needs food. You know what I drank last night before I went to bed? I told my husband, you need to freaking eat because he was even feeling a little bit like, because, you know, he's he's doing the, the, what is it, the chainsaw stuff and it just battered his body and he was in pain. And I'm just like, okay, so I told him, you better freaking eat. You need to eat for this environment. You need to eat for your lifestyle. You have to fucking eat. And you have to shit your brains out occasionally or a lot more often. And so I drank some cream. I had a few, I bought a bunch of cheese sticks for the apocalypse. I'm <laughs> thinking that we might have no electricity for three weeks. So I have a bunch of cheese sticks that I gave him or that I have. And I, and he's eaten a bunch of cheese sticks, but both of us were tired. I mean, we, we was cleaning the tub because I've, I've never had hard water. I was raised with a water softener. So we never had to do too much like cleaning of lime and all that stuff from hard water. And so living in a world where I don't have a water softener, my husband figured out how to get the bathtub. So he was helping me with the bathtub. Next time I will use the Lysol from the toilet cleaner and do that and soak it like it, like, because he got it so fucking clean. I'm like, oh my God, that's so awesome. So I'm learning how to clean for my husband. Okay. But yeah, when you're raised with privilege of a water softener and you don't have to deal with hard water, wow. Yeah, you don't realize that you have to keep up on that shit, literally. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> so how you're raised is, is definitely um, uh, a difference in how you deal with cleaning and stuff. So anyways, but he was working hard this weekend and, and he's feeling the pain of the climate change. I was working hard and taking care of some stuff and and I had to take a nap because we were out there on Saturday eating out and buying some stuff for the house because now we're finally taking care of the house. And I shopped for some towels and, you know, and and he's taking a day off today because he's going to have to. You, 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 I'm serious. You guys have to realize we're in a very different fucking climate. And so people with autoimmune disorders need to eat the food and release the demons and rest. And you can't afford to be food discriminatory. Those that work in very labor intensive jobs, you got to figure out how much you really actually need. And if you have kids, man, I feel sorry for you because that's a lot to take care of. Kids require so much. And when you're constantly taking care of a child that's taking so much from you, oh, I don't know how you're going to do it. That's why you you don't urge your kids to have children because they're probably at this point when you look at time lapse photography and when you put a little family when you put a person, not a little, take a one person and then you divide them up over time, all of a sudden that one person that's divided up into all these offspring called children and cousins and whatever else, then you see the extinction at some point of that family genetic line. Okay? And it's happening. Some of these kids will be not only infertile, but so weak. Because infertility is, is inevitable. It's going to happen. The system is gearing towards that. You're not going to have time to be fertile enough to have a baby. They project by 2045, both men and women in the West will be infertile. It's Africa who's going to have the, the, the population boom because they're adopting the Western ways. They're going to get their operations. They're going to get their herbal remedies, the shamans, all the religion to promote family, to keep dividing and dividing and dividing and splitting their DNA until eventually only the strongest ones will be um, left. Okay? But yeah, over time, you're going to see people become infertile and you're going to watch these kids become so infertile because that's the way the system is going. And then their whole genetic line will be done because they will develop offspring from viruses. Okay? from all the different um, exposure to climate change, of course. They're not going to rest and relax and eat food. They're going to want to keep up with people around them. 
because we have different climates in different areas. California is not getting as aggressive right now. They're getting their own. Okay, California and Florida, they're getting, they have their own aggressive shit going on, of course. But that's more of a sensitive, vulnerable population. You put climate change in Florida and California like you have right now in Ohio, that's so aggressive over here that's even taken down, taking down Appalachian folk here. You can only imagine what goes on here would kick California's ass. I mean, it is on some level. Kids are progressively, and so are adults, progressively going to the hospital, getting treated. And as the climate shifts even more so, as it heats up, cools down, as it slowly becomes even more changing, even people in California are, are going to be like, what the hell's going on over here? It's already happening. And so every region will get their share of a type of climate change that's going to be more than what they can handle. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad I came here. Being from California, I really had to climb very hard. I had to seriously fight to live and survive here in Ohio as someone from California and even from the Vietnam War. I had to fight to fucking live and survive here and watch my husband having to battle for himself to survive the climate here and survive the expectations and the lifestyle. Realizing that, yeah, when you're younger, yeah, you're invincible when you're younger. Until you start realizing that uh, you can't play the same games anymore. Not saying that you couldn't survive climate change and going from one hay flick limit to another. But you're going to have to do shit differently. But, you know, how people are, they resist change. They have to look beautiful. Their kids have to look beautiful. They have to look successful. Because their friends around them all are successful. And so if they change, then that would mean that you're not successful. That would mean that you're not beautiful. That you're not, you know, inventive and innovative. That you're not part of, like, you know, the group that you have been told and you've been coveting to be part of that group. So people will die for their friends, they'll die for their family, the kids will die for their parents, the parents will die for their kids, and that's pretty inevitable. And with this climate change, everything is accelerating. So me waking up with so much mucus, I can only imagine what someone is dealing with out there in my in my neighborhood. Some people have the gift of sturdiness, but even then that's being chipped away during climate change. Bodies are slowly, even accelerating, falling apart. And so, yeah, life is ugly when it is allowed to live in a dynamic environment. Because you're not going to look like the industry standard of beauty. You're going to be bloated sometimes. You're Some days, remember, I, that's why I take different pictures. The days I look good, I want you to see that. Today, I don't know if I look good or not to someone who is just walking in on the situation. When they're comparing me to many years ago. Yeah, I'm 50. I'm not trying to look hot and sexual. I'm not trying to look like an industry standard of beauty. I'm not trying to fight mother nature. I'm going to fluctuate with the environment. Release demons. Take on pressure. But I might have a little issue with range of motion right now. Because the way the lymph nodes are and everything. Things are different with my arms. Oh yeah. But they're supposed to be because my lymph nodes have been working overtime trying to push all the different growth throughout my immune system to release it in the proper places so I don't fucking sur uh, die from a heart attack or a stroke. I survive climate change. My lymphatic system is working for me. When people get organs taken out and they get appendicitis, when their appendix bursts because they're, they're so full of stool that it causes not only infection, but sometimes that infection will cause different organs to burst. And that's why you have kidney failure. That's why you have appendicitis, appendix, bursting of appendix. That's why you have liver failure. That's why you have thyroid issues. That's why people are falling apart. Because they're not releasing the demons. They're full of shit. They're getting operations. So they're getting the system to do workarounds. But workarounds, which is an industry term in the computer world, is only temporary. You can't rely on workarounds. And that's what the hospital system is. It's a workaround. That's what the surgical system is. It's a workaround. And it's not something that should be 
in, in, you know, indefinite. It's maybe one time when you get into a car accident and you have to have a bumper removed from your ass and they have to do a workaround and pull out that bumper out of your ass because it's not like you're going to break that bumper down and poop it out. So the system has to go and actually surgically take out that bumper. But when you are surgically taking yourself out of your usual life, it's a painful process and people will People will pressure you into staying with whatever they think is normal. And so surgically taking yourself out of the mainstream, it's a very painful process that some do not survive, will not survive it because they cannot handle their friends and family. They try to change. They don't have what it takes. So they change and they can't support it. So they go back into the system again, which you've seen in the J world. How many people in the J world have really stuck with my information? Most haven't. Most will sign me on and say, yeah, well, I get it, Jillian. I probably know two right now that are watching me, Tanya and Audrey, that I think actually get where I'm coming from. Okay? Tanya and Audrey. And maybe one or two other people that I don't see right now. That's not a really high percentage. Some people say, yeah, I get it. Okay, sure. But you're still shaking your fist at the sky and and you're still promoting beauty and, and, and all that shit. And you, you're not going to change and you won't. And you won't tell your grandkids to change. You won't tell yourself to change. Not that you can tell anyone to change. But really, it's the representation. You have to be the example. But I see people going, I see people sliding back into the system again. And they have. I look at the, really, a lot of people in the Hebrew world. They say they agree with me. They like my posts. But they're, they're, they're staying away from meat, milk, cheese, and eggs. They've, you know, they're, they're promoting the remedies, even though they don't make money from it. They're like giving each other remedies, concoctions to take away their pain and suffering. Want to be the hero to each other. Yeah. I would say 99.99% of the people in the J world, the early adopters have gone back into the system because they can't handle change. They can't handle pain and suffering for damn sure. Their security blanket is the chemtrails world. Their security blanket is the anti V world. Their security blanket is a supplements world. Their security blanket is to stay relevant until they don't, they're not relevant anymore. So I would say 99.99% cannot handle my world. And I'm fine with that. The system knew. I, I finally figured out that my information is way beyond, way ahead of its time. Penny, that's who else. I didn't see her name, Penny. Penny is another one I think fucking gets it. But um, the system knew that most people would not understand actual change. That people are mostly into fads and something that's that's popular and, you know, and it for a minute until it's not. And so what did I say? Um, yeah, yeah, um, that's, that's all I'm going to say right now, but uh, my husband's home and I just want to say, yeah, you are part of a Luciferian system. Most of you are, I even see people in the anti V world who've gotten operations, cataracts taken out of their eyes, totally against the V's, but they're going back into the medical world into the Luciferian system. Instead of going through the pain and suffering of dealing with releasing and taking on substance and eating out, they're going back into the system of which they said they were against. They were against the V's and they go and get surgeries. So you're going to see even those in the, um, in the activism world. It's very difficult to be really true to your intentions. No, it's not. You were just given, you were just given an argument to blame for whatever your situation was. And that was it. Whatever the latest thing until it's not, until you can't handle your activism anymore. Then you go back into the system. People couldn't handle the J world or releasing demons. I'm not even selling J juice. It's not even, that's not even part of the whole J world. No, the J world is an evolution. And you have to understand the evolution. If you still think I'm, I'm promoting J juice like I did back in 2018, you're proving how unevolved you are because you haven't been following me. 
You just jump in when it's convenient. No, no, the J world is not promoting the J juice anymore. It's promoting evolution. It's promoting food and pain and suffering. Not taking away someone's pain and suffering. Not being a god to somebody. Okay? Yeah, you're... Most of the world right now, the activist world, it's Luciferian. You're shedding light on something that was in the dark. It's Luciferian. Can you handle the light? How many people, how many people can't handle the light? They're dying from the light because they don't know how to support it properly and they can't go in the dark when it's, when it's, when it's required. They stay in the light and they deteriorate in the light. That's Luciferian. Staying in an activist while decaying. Bringing light to something. The truth. The truth or movement. That's Luciferian. Very Luciferian. And so to claim that that people are Lucifer, Luciferian, but you're not. I'm in a Luciferian side. I know I'm in a Luciferian. I'm, I'm part of it. I do shed light on things and then I go into the dark. It's called, I blacked out my windows. I'll take time for myself. That's the dark. I don't die to bring light to somebody else. I won't die for somebody else's lifestyle and belief system. I won't die to keep up with people to stay relevant and cute and hot and sexual and have a billion children to dilute the genetic line. I'm not doing that. I'm not dying for anyone. And so when you think about a lot of the religions out there, actually, yes, all the mainstream religions that you see all over Facebook, the people are getting their surgeries, they're getting their remedies, they're all about love and having to hang out with people all the time. That's very Luciferian. Luciferian. Even though you claim you're not, you're Luciferian. Because you can't handle being on your own. You can't handle the dark. You can't handle pain and suffering. You're saying that food is poison. And you think your religion is better than somebody else's religion. Well, that's Luciferian. The truth or movement is Luciferian. That is what I'm going to fucking say. The truth movement is Luciferian because people will die bringing light and waking you up. People will die. People will die for bringing the truth and light into a stranger's world. Yeah, so the truth movement is Luciferian. And that's what you have to realize. It is what it is. All right, see you later.